Hello, uh, I'm back. The scenery has changed. Uh, I've got a pandemic haircut and we're gonna talk about controls. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about controls, what controls are. Uh, so we've been, we moved on from just having a single variable regression to being able to have a multivariate regression, meaning that there's more than one variable on the right hand side. Uh, now we're typically really only interested in the effect of one of those variables, right? We're trying to identify the effect of one single variable on our outcome. Now, what are all the other variables doing there? We would call them controls uh, because they need to be there to help solve endogeneity. We want to avoid identification issues uh, because if we just look at the relationship between y and x by itself, we might get some results that are not representative of the causal effect of x on y. And when we get an effect, when we get an estimate, that might be an accurate statistical estimate, uh, but does not reflect the underlying theoretical causal effect that we are interested in, we call that identification error. Uh, now we can add controls to help get us to identification. Uh, now what are controls? What are they gonna do for us? So first of all, a recap of what endogeneity is. So we're gonna assume that our true model looks a little bit like this, uh, where we have a y as an outcome variable, and there's a linear relationship between y and x. By linear relationship, I mean we are drawing a straight line. There's an intercept to that line, the beta zero, and there's a slope to that line, the beta one. Now, of course, there's, this is not a perfect prediction, right? Very few relationships are perfectly predicted by a straight line like this, and so we have that error term epsilon there. Uh, and what that is doing is that is just explaining in, not statistically, but in, in truth, there's, a, there's some other stuff in Y that's not being explained by X. Everything that explains Y that is not X is in that error term, all right? So if X is related to any of the other things that explain Y, we're gonna have an endogeneity problem. We're gonna have an identification issue because OLS is gonna mistake the impact of X for, B, for the impact of those other variables. Uh, so let's give a quick example. So let's say we're, we're trying to explain why people eat ice cream when they do. Uh, and one of the variables that we've noticed is that ice cream eating tends to be related to when people wear shorts. People wear more shorts on days where people eat more ice cream. Uh, however, of course, if we just look at this relationship by itself, we will be attributing a, the actual effect of a different variable to shorts wearing, and that is temperature. Temperature here is in the error term because it explains ice cream eating. When, people, when it's hot, people eat more ice cream, uh, as I can tell you, Right now, it's very hot and we have a freezer full of ice cream uh, and it's not in our model. So if it explains the outcome variable and it is not in the model, it is in the error term. Now, temperature is also related to shorts wearing. People tend to wear more shorts on days when it is hot. And OLS doesn't know that shorts wearing doesn't actually cause ice cream eating. It doesn't know. It can just see the data. It doesn't know how things work. Okay, And so when it sees in the data that ice cream eating and shorts wearing are related to each other, it will say, ah, this is a relationship. I'm going to say this is a positive relationship. It looks like shorts wearing causes people to eat ice cream. But actually, it's that thing in the error term. I am misattributing the effect of temperature to being a shorts wearing effect because I can't tell the difference. Right? How can we make it tell the difference? Well, we can make it tell the difference by bringing temperature in and including it as a control variable, right? If we take it out of the error term and put it in the model, suddenly OLS is able to tell the difference between the effect of shorts wearing and the effect of temperature, even those two, though, though those two things are related to each other, okay? So that's the point of controls. The point of controls is that there's something in the error term that is related to our effective interest or our variable of interest that we're trying to find the effect of. If we leave it in the error term, it's going to give us an identification issue because OLS is going to assign the effect of those variables to mistake, and it's going to mistakenly think that it's the effect of the treatment variable. Uh, but by bringing it into the model, we can get rid of that additional effect. What controls do? and this is moving on to the actual point of controls, is that they look at the relationship between our outcome variable and our treatment variable of interest, and it says, there's a couple of reasons why those two things are related to each other, right? Why are ice cream and shorts wearing related to each other? Well, one possible reason is that short wearing shorts makes you eat ice cream. It's possible, I don't know, right? But another possible reason why is temperature, right? If it's hot, 
both of those things are going to happen. Maybe there's other reasons why we might expect both of those things to occur together as well. So given that there's multiple reasons why, but if we're only interested in the one where shorts wearing causes you to eat ice cream, I need to separate those things out. And so adding a control for a variable removes the part of the relationship between the two variables that is explained by that variable. So why are ice cream wearing, eating and shorts wearing related to each other? Maybe one causes the other, but maybe it's just temperature that on hot days, both of those things happen. If I add temperature as a control, it literally takes the part of that covariation, the part of that correlation and subtracts it out. And anything that's left over has to be the part of the relationship that has nothing to do with temperature, at least assuming that we got our linear model correct. Uh, let's actually see this in action. So here's some raw data. So what we have is we have an X variable and we have a Y variable, all right? And those two variables, it kind of looks like uh, if you just looked at them all together, there's a positive relationship. But you can also see that the different colors, which are the W variable here, uh, are what's actually causing that positive relationship to be there. That if you look at the clusters by themselves, it's kind of negative, but only by looking at them separately. Well, so if we were just to take this raw data and look at the relationship between Y and X, if we regressed Y and X, we'd get a strong positive relationship, uh, particularly a correlation of uh, 0.425, which is not a, not, a, not a weak correlation. But we also know that it's not really that X causes Y in a positive way. It's that it's this W thing that seems to be related to both of them. A, va a W value of 1 seems to be related to high X's and high Y's together and vice versa. So how can we control for W? Well, literally what it's doing is it's saying, hey, there's a difference in X that seems to be explained by W. I'm going to subtract that difference out. And there's a difference in Y that seems to be explained by W. I'm going to subtract that difference out. And by subtracting out the parts of X and Y that are explained by W, we are subtracting out the part of the relationship between X and Y that are explained by W. Meaning that the remaining relationship between X and Y is just the part of the relationship that has nothing to do with W, which in this case is a correlation of negative 0.457. So in going back to the ice cream example, if we controlled for temperature, what we would get in our coefficient on shorts wearing now would be the part of the relationship between ice cream and shorts wearing that has nothing to do with temperature. That's the point of adding a control. That's what adding a control does. And that's why we're interested in doing it because there's not a whole lot of relationships that you can get the causal effect of without any sort of adjustment whatsoever. There's usually some sort of endogeneity problem. And so we're going to need to add some controls in order to handle that issue. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you.